So apparently Zavala has a neck tattoo, and I've just never seen it in 10 years of playing this game. It's kind of tucked in there with his armor, so I can see why I didn't notice it at first, but myth confirmed, let's move on to the next. This is everyone's favorite robot named Trevor, and apparently he doesn't actually kill you anymore, so now he's friendly. He can also push you around, this is awesome. If I jump off the map in right about this location, I'm supposed to enter what is being called the Destiny 2 back rooms. And, um... Okay, maybe I have to go forward. I can land on this little ledge over here. Hey, Nice! This looks a lot like the Ascendant Realm, I'm assuming that's what this is, but that is actually crazy that you can access this whole area from patrol by jumping like a thousand feet down a random hole. The edges of Titan Barricades are actually just fake, and you can shoot right through them like they don't even exist. Apparently there's a way to deal significantly more damage with your golden gun, and all you have to do is cast your sniper golden gun right beforehand and then immediately fire your golden gun. As you can see, without this strategy, I'm doing 564,000, so let's see if it changes. 620,000! The appearance of the witness has been somewhat controversial because it doesn't exactly look like a stereotypical sci-fi villain, but apparently all of this time it has been hiding a tiny mouth underneath its armor and we've just never been able to see it. I have no idea how to replicate this in game, but I did see this post the other day showing that the witness does indeed have a mouth and it just looks extremely strange. I'm not really sure how else to put it. You might think that the legendary shard currency was removed from the game, and well, so did I, but then I went onto the Destiny 2 companion app on my phone. It turns out the legendary shards do actually still exist on your character, you just can't really spend them in the game. I've heard that there is a shader that is even darker than Super Black, and that's kind of interesting because this shader is popular for being the darkest shader in the game. The shader in question is Grayscale Undergrowth, so let's see if it makes any difference. Myth confirmed, at least on certain armor pieces, this shader is much darker than Super Black. Apparently you can solo Crota by simply pushing him off the side of the map with a finisher. Now Bungie did say that they patched this a while back, but this video is pretty recent and this guy is still able to fully push him off the map. So myth confirmed, you can easily solo Crota with just your finisher. If you played Destiny 1, you probably remembered the sweeper bot, and apparently he was brought back into Destiny 2 right in his old location. And sure enough, here he is, even though he's now a tree and he doesn't quite look the same as he used to, but myth confirmed. So apparently the Stompy's got a stealth buff that makes them much better, but then nobody actually noticed. This one is pretty interesting, but before we get to that, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first ever chef to consumer platform, meaning that you will receive meals that are cooked in regional kitchens instead of factories or warehouses. Their team of talented chefs ensures that every meal is delicious and arrives cooked and ready to eat. For example, today I'm having the chilled peanut soba noodles with tofu from chef Stacy Barang in LA. Here are a couple of the other meals I received and I was incredibly impressed by how unique they were because many of these were unlike anything I'd ever tried. Cook Unity has an ever-changing offering of diverse meal choices, and you can easily filter for any dietary preference like vegan, paleo, or gluten-free. As you can see here, the weekly subscription offers all of these different options, and I love how they focus on having great taste while simultaneously using real ingredients that you can actually pronounce. If you try Cook Unity, you'll notice that the subscription is super flexible, so you can cancel, skip weeks, or pause at any time. You'll also get a huge discount for using my code, so even if you just try it for a week, it is a pretty great deal. Go to cookunity.com slash shadowd50 or use the link below and use my code shadowd50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity and try out the meals for yourself. If you read the perk right here, it says that it buffs your double jump, sprint, slide, and air hip fire, and the last part is the thing that I'm wondering about. I'm testing my airborne accuracy with it equipped and also not equipped, and it doesn't seem to make any difference. I've also taken a couple screenshots of my reticle to see if anything changed there, and when I do a comparison, they seem to be exactly the same. So I think I'm just gonna say myth busted, this perk actually doesn't do anything and hasn't been changed. There's a myth that certain classes have better melees than others because they actually deal damage faster. I recorded every melee like this, and then upon reviewing the footage, it does seem that they're all the same, so myth busted. There's a very common myth that stat tiers have diminishing returns as you get higher and higher in any given stat. This is often true, but it's not always the case, because for example, the difference between 9 and 10 resilience is much greater than the difference between 8 and 9. Other players may even believe that each stat tier provides the same bonus, but as you can see here on D2 Armor Picker, they are very different, and some stat tiers are simply better than others. 
The enemies called the Dread have their own language that can be understood and actually translated to English. This one has been confirmed by Bungie themselves, but it seems kind of difficult to translate the language because we don't really have any resources to do so, and it just kind of sounds like this. So you know these extremely annoying turrets that deal a lot of damage? Well, apparently you can just completely counter them by standing on top of them and they will never be able to hit you. Yeah, myth confirmed, this has got to be the easiest way to take out these turrets. This is the Destiny logo, and it's kind of been a mystery ever since the game came out, but apparently the Fallen Walker will actually leave this logo as a footprint when they walk on the ground. So let's check it out. This one is actually confirmed, they do leave it as a footprint, even though it is kind of hard to see in certain situations. In the Warlord's Ruin dungeon, it locks you in this room and you have to solve a puzzle in order to escape. Instead of doing the puzzle though, you can just use your finisher on the enemy to escape your jail and claim your loot. For a while now, there have been some discussions about a new Nightmare Power subclass that is coming soon, and we can actually confirm that something related to this does actually exist thanks to this Micah quest. She and I believe that they are a yet untapped power of the darkness. In addition to this, there was also supposedly a leak from a while back showing off some of the icons from the new subclass. Despite all of the discussion and rumors about this leak though, Bungie actually came out recently and said that it was completely false and someone from the community just made it up. We don't know about the future of a potential Nightmare subclass, but we do know that the rumors about these icons were definitely just a myth. I've heard that Destiny 2 cutscenes are actually created in real time, meaning that if you put a bunch of stuff in the environment, it will actually show up in your cutscene. Right now, I'm just putting a ton of stasis all over this area, and we will see if it shows up in the actual video. <laughs> yes, myth confirmed Shahad is stuck in a stasis crystal. Oh, and also by the way, if you're wondering how I am able to play the New Light quest on my main account, you can actually just go over to the quest kiosk right here and pick up any quest you want in order to replay it. Right now, I'm in the Enclave, and apparently you can go way back into the distance at the very end of this cave and actually survive and hang out back there. Alright, so far I'm only turning back, I crashed into the wall, and with zero seconds remaining, I somehow survived. Wow, alright, myth confirmed, this area is actually quite cool looking. There is actually a way to play PvP within the patrol zone of the Pale Heart. I would absolutely love to see a real form of world PvP someday, but for now, I think this is the closest that you can get. I'm not really sure how to activate this myself, but as you can see in this video from Rhythm, you can glitch the Dual Destiny mission to activate PvP in the regular patrol, and he even shows this awesome 1v1 in the Witness Arena where you have that final boss fight. Someone told me that the text for Vanguard is misspelled on the emblem tracker, so let me check it out. It says Van Goward. Alright, it's true, myth confirmed. Apparently all new weapons have deterministic recoil and the pattern is the same every single time, so let's test a whole bunch of the ones that came out recently and see if this is actually the case. The recoil direction stat is something that is very misunderstood and unintuitive, and there are several myths related to it. For example, many players believe that it's good to have a 100 recoil stat, and many others believe that it's good to have it end with the number 5. The thing is, though, neither of those statements are actually true because of the new recoil system. With the way that the system works now, you probably want to choose a high number that also happens to counteract the natural tendency of the weapon in order to make it more vertical as a result. Apparently when the Prime Aether event starts, a bunch of fallen ships just crash into the mountain. That makes a lot of sense, thank you Bungie. A lot of Destiny quests have various objects that you need to pick up and move, and sometimes these objects even make you go extremely slow. However, apparently if you just have a Eager Edge sword and you pull it out right before you pick up the object, it will allow you to go much faster. For comparison, this is how short the attack normally is. You can also use this to make your shoulder charge go extremely far. When sparrows are enabled in the Midtown PvP map, you can actually ride them on the water down here. So normally when you walk around in shallow water, you kind of just run on top of it as if it's not there, but apparently with the Hunter Arc Super, you can actually go under the water, so let's see what happens. Yo! Oh, okay, the water has disappeared, I'm now, I'm now like in the lake bed. This is actually pretty cool. Oh, I can drive my sparrow underwater. Oh! If you shatter dive into a sloped surface while spamming jump, apparently it will just make you float upward into the sky until you reach the maximum height that the game will let you go. Alright, and... Oh! 
Wow, I didn't expect it to be this powerful, but myth confirmed this is some awesome movement tech. Many players think that it's all good to just collect this seasonal loot right away, but it seems that this is actually the wrong way to do it, technically speaking. If you save up like 600 or 800 of the currency before you turn it in, you will actually get better rewards. The game even mentions this right here, although it is very easy to miss. If you notice that your game chat is filled up with stuff that you don't want to see anymore, you can simply type slash clear and it will get rid of it. This one is actually confirmed and as you can see it now says the chat history has been cleared. Alternatively, you can just press L on PC and this will hide the chat and make it go away. Many weapons are able to get enhanced perks, which are basically just better versions of the normal perk. However, Enhanced Frenzy actually does not provide any extra benefits, and as you can see on LightGG here, they've noted that it currently provides no benefit, even though it used to do something in the past. If you cast an emote where it summons something into your hand, you can then proceed to do a different emote and it will still remain in your hand. In particular, the basketball emote works pretty great for dribbling and then throwing things like this sign or even this umbrella. The fan favorite Menagerie activity is actually coming back to Destiny 2. I'm not sure I can confirm this one with 100% certainty, but somebody did get a bug where they could see the Menagerie activity within the helm. So who knows, we might be seeing this in the next year. So there's a myth that your radar is circular, and this is what I thought for the longest time, but then I needed to recreate it for a graphic in a video, and I noticed that it's actually oddly not circular, and it's not even that close to being a circle. The sweet business exotic was actually changed and now only has 45 rounds in the magazine, even though it is known for having an extremely large amount of bullets. As you can see right here, it clearly says there is only 45 in the magazine, but in reality when you go into the game, there is still 150 rounds, so I guess this is just a visual bug. Apparently you can destroy the jump ship that New Lights used to actually skip the campaign. After hitting it for quite a while, it doesn't actually seem to be taking damage, so I think it's safe to say myth busted. How about this big cabal ship? Can you actually go and land on the jump ship that is floating in the sky? There is a way to go out of bounds so far that you actually reach the orbit of Europa. Now, I'm not going to attempt this one myself because it looks extremely difficult, but this player named Solus actually posted a video where he is in the orbit of Europa. He loaded into patrol and got all the way to the Deepstone Crypt raid. Malfeasance is extremely strong against blocking supers like the Arkstrider because the explosion just completely negates their block. Well, actually, myth busted. It seems to be doing literally nothing. When you're in a social area like this, you are allowed to use your double jump, but oddly, you're not allowed to use your blink. However, if you pull out a sword, it will suddenly allow you to blink again, and I'm not really sure why this is the case. Within the Prophecy Dungeon, it can be kind of hard to tell if you're in the light or the dark, because some of the areas are in between, and it's not necessarily black and white. However, a good way to tell is the sound effects, because when you're in dark, it makes this sound, and then when you go back to the light, it makes this sound. There is also this visual effect when you are in the light. You might know that Shax is missing one of his horns, but did you also know that the robot nearby is actually wearing his horns? The fastball mod makes your grenades go much faster and further, but for whatever reason, if you switch over to the scatter grenade, the fastball mod just doesn't work anymore. After a bit of testing, this myth is actually busted. Scatter nades don't go as far as other grenades, but the fastball still improves its performance. There is a limit to the number of people you can block in Destiny 2. I didn't want to go blocking random people until I hit the limit, but I did find this screenshot of someone saying they had blocked 1500 people and that was the maximum. Many players may believe that the Ophidian Aspect exotic will give you bonus melee range, because, well, it says that it does right here. When you actually go into the game and test this though, it's very clear that it does not actually give you any extra range. When you reload the Dire Promise hand cannon, you can actually see the number of final blows that you've gotten with the weapon. I had to pause the video to go back and see this, and while it does show some kind of counter, it is not accurate to my specific character, so I think I'm gonna have to say Myth Busted. Mithrax's cloak normally just looks like this, but if you look away and then quickly look back, it will flutter very violently. This emote temporarily makes you disappear, at which time you cannot be hit by bullets. Apparently Still Hunt is insane for Gambit because you can just invade and one-shot everybody to the body with the golden gun rounds. Alright, here we go, let's see if I can find anybody. Oh my gosh. Insane aim assist and one-shots to the body, myth definitely confirmed. 
The Crow has now taken Cade's old position as he is now officially the new Hunter Vanguard. He says a couple random voice lines, but you can't actually interact with him and he's not a proper vendor, at least not yet. Next up, go check out this iceberg video covering all of the most insane stories from the past decade of Destiny.